I'm Anastasia Moroso, and this is Beyond 6040. On this show, we do a deep dive into the alternative investment space, share industry leader insights, and discuss the latest innovations in technology. Today, we'll start with my private market pulse snapshot, and I'll share the one thing that caught my attention this week in private markets. Next up, we sit down with Sean Ward, who is a senior managing director at Blue Isle, and he helps lay out how GP stake strategies can deliver private equity-like returns through annual cash flow yield to LPs. Then in our tech spotlight segment, we pick up the conversation with Brian Reuter, partner Premiera from our last episode, and dive deeper into how some firms are using artificial intelligence to create deep fake detection technology. Let's get to it. In today's private market poll snapshot, the one thing I'm focused on is the niche but growing world of GP stakes investing and how 2024 may be a bounce back year after a lackluster 2023 for the space. But first, what exactly is GP stakes investing and how does it fit into investors' portfolios? Well, a GP stakes fund involves purchasing minority stakes in GPs and other private capital firms, commonly around 20%, to gain indirect exposure to GP's investments and balance sheets. Now, this structure allows investors, the LPs, to participate in the profit sharing of the underlying GP's management and performance fees, while also gaining diversified exposure to the various strategies, vintages, and geographies of that GP. And because of the fixed nature of GP management fees, GP stakes investments offer stable income, potentially mitigating downside losses, but still capturing potential appreciation in the value of the GP stake. Indeed, these funds often carry gross yields of around 7 to 10% in the early years and can reach mid-teens as the fund portfolios mature. So why would GPs give up minority interest in the first place? Well, for many, it provides additional capital and liquidity that can help with fundraising and deal making. And for smaller GPs, an investment from a larger asset manager or GP offers strategic insights and advisory support and also helps some of these smaller GPs weather various market environments and potentially seize on growth opportunities. Now, despite the benefits to both investors and investees, the right market conditions must be in place to attract and deploy capital. Indeed, in 2023, both buyers and sellers of GP stakes retreated from the market with the total number of GP stakes transactions declining 30% from 39 deals done in 2022 to 27 in 2023, but of course that still remains above the longer run average of 25 deals. Now, interestingly enough, looking at who is doing the deals, we're starting to see more GPs venturing into the space albeit some of the more active GPs have slightly pulled back. Now, that said, this downturn coincided with a broader slowdown in private market fundraising, which saw two straight years of declines. Fundraising uncertainty left sellers of minority stakes hesitant, understandably, to engage in deals because these firms preferred to avoid the risk of potentially selling their stake in their firm at a discount. But looking forward, green shoots are emerging as the global macro environment turns more supportive throughout 2024. And fundraising is seemingly stabilizing, and this has led many industry players to turn more optimistic about future deal activity, with GPs looking to sell stakes and buyers seeking to deploy fresh capital. So we'll continue to monitor this activity throughout the year. And that's your one thing in private markets this week. But be sure to stick around for our next segment because in it, we take a deeper dive into exactly what's going on right now uh, in the world of GP stakes investing. And we do that together with Sean Ward at Blue Owl, one of the leading managers of this strategy. Check it out. My guest today is Sean Ward, Senior Managing Director of Blue Owl Capital and member of the firm's Board of Directors and Executive Committee. Blue Owl's GP stakes vertical accounts for $51.8 billion of the firm's $165 billion in assets under management. With over a decade of experience in the strategy, starting at Dial Capital, Blue Owl is a leading capital solutions provider. With that, thank you so much, Sean, for joining us here today. Thank you. Uh, it's good to see you, and let's start in the very beginning. GP stakes, what is the strategy, what does it do, and why should investors be interested in it? Well, the good news is my strategy is quite a bit simpler than a lot of the other strategies you probably hear about here. Um, GP stakes is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. Our business buys 
minority equity stakes in large alternative asset management firms. And in terms of why investors should be interested in it, I think you know a lot of folks have seen that you know the GPs, the managers of private equity strategies, have over the years generated quite a lot of wealth, both for their investors but also for themselves. And I think a lot of investors have wondered, is there a way that I can get access to the GP's economics? Can I, can I put myself on their side of the table? And really, that's what we aim to do with our strategy. Right. And of course, GP stakes is just exactly that. You're investing through a minority interest into some of those GPs. And you mentioned the cash return. And so if I'm an investor in the GP stakes fund, what kind of cash returns, cash yields can I expect from this? Well, I mean, of course, it varies year to year. But you know, when we underwrite one of these transactions, we want our money back just from those operating profits from management fees, carried interest and balance sheet returns. And we, we want a nice multiple of our money back over 10, 11, 12 years. So private equity like return, but through that annual cash flow yield. So, you know, in a in a really good year, high teens, you know, more like a mid teens is our, our base case. That's the type of cash flow we're trying to generate. Right. And I'm curious, how is the today's market environment impacting this mid teens yield expectation? Uh, you know, are you looking for opportunities that push you higher mm -hmm. into the teens or uh, because of maybe lack of exits that some of the private equity firms are realizing maybe that yield skews a little bit lower? We've been very lucky and it's important to also just make clear that when I say private equity, I'm speaking very, very loosely. I'm, I'm really speaking about anything in private markets that's in a closed end drawdown format. So we buy stakes in buyout firms, but we also buy stakes in real estate, private credit, infrastructure, venture and growth equity firms, et cetera. And so because we have such diversified portfolios, even when things are a little bit slower in one part of the portfolio, like in buyout, broadly speaking right mm -hmm. now, other areas like private credit have, are doing very well. I mean, I'm sure you're probably tired of hearing that it's a, a golden age for private credit, but that, that's certainly it a proven few times to be true. On this program. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure. And I, sorry for adding to that list. We've been uh, very fortunate to, to be able to continue producing the type of cash yields we, we were hoping for, even in the current market. And you mentioned the diversification. So when you think about GP stakes, it's not just investing in private equity, but it's truly investing across the entire uh, private market universe. And of course, if you look at private markets, you know, the assets under management have grown tremendously, right, to 12 trillion or 13 trillion. And that is set to uh, go to 28 or so in the next few years. So that's a tremendous opportunity uh, to participate. But here's the question. Um, I imagine you work with some smaller GPs mm -hmm. and some of the larger GPs, and maybe help me understand where you are, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in terms of that market. But also, if I'm a large GP, why would I want to give away a minority interest in my company? Um, and the name that comes to mind, CVC, for example, mm -hmm. 188 billion uh, euros in assets under management. Why would somebody like that come to you uh, for your GP stake strategy? Yeah, and unfortunately, they're not giving it away. We do have to buy it still, but no, but it's a, but it's a very fair question. And, and we look at managers of all different sizes, but really in our flagship strategy, we're focused on the upper end of the market. And that's where we've done most of our deals. It's really where we're doing the most of the market's deals, in fact. Um, and why a manager would want to do this? Well, when you think about private equity as a business, it consumes a lot of capital. You know, Every time you raise a fund, you have that GP co-investment obligation to invest alongside your investors in the fund. And so when you're talking about a firm like CVC, I mean, their last fund was 26 billion euro, right? They raised it in six months last year. If you assume a 2% GP commitment, that's 520 million euro just in that one fund alone across a much broader platform. So you should think about the capital that we're providing as not being a liquidity event for anyone. It's actually balance sheet capital for the firm that's going into investing in funds like CVC's latest fund. It's going toward uh, acquiring businesses to add to a firm's platform. It's going toward helping with succession planning from one generation to the next, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's really the firms that are doing the best that are most in need of that growth equity that we can provide. And, mm -hmm. and we're, we're very fortunate to be in the position to write the biggest checks in the market right now. How is the current market environment impacting the opportunities that you see for GP stakes? Is it because we've seen a slowdown in fundraising, you're seeing more opportunities and more managers come to you for that additional capital? Or what's the impact that you see of today's higher rates, slower fundraising? Right. I think on average, it's it's very, very true that fundraising has slowed. I think when you look at the, the upper end of the market by size, where we're really focused, the slowdown has been much less pronounced. I mean, our mm -hmm. managers, by and large, have hit their, hit their numbers or exceeded their numbers on the fundraising side. I think even firms, though, that are looking at the market from a position of strength can, can look around and say, well, you know, it would be very, very helpful to have balance sheet capital, whether it's to launch new products and get them to scale more quickly, or to go out and acquire businesses and add them onto the platform to add different business lines without having to grow them organically. There's a lot of flexibility 
to play both offense and defense that having a balance sheet provides. And that's really been our bread and butter for a long time. But right now, I would say our capital is in more demand than it ever has been previously. Right. Well, that's great to hear. And that's great to have that opportunity. Uh, Sean, thank you so much. This has been terrific. Thanks so much for joining us today and for a great discussion and sharing your insights today. Thanks for having us. Or me. <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs>
But in this case, you have uh, companies that own uh, huge data sets, which are really crucial to being able to train more verticalized applications. In addition, they have AI teams. I think mean, most of the companies that we've been invested behind on the technology side have had AI teams for decades. So you're just giving new tools to teams who already know what to be able to, to do with them. And so the time to value from deploying some of these tools is much faster than when you had to completely re-architect your core product stack around, for example, cloud or mobile. Yeah, well, it sounds like the next 12 months is gonna be maybe even more exciting than the last 12 months. Thank you again, Brian, for that fantastic conversation and for sharing your expertise around technology and AI with us. And we want to hear from you. Send us an email at yourquestion at iCapitalNetwork.com and let us know what questions are at the forefront for you and your clients. I'm Anastasia Moroso, and thank you for joining us today. I'll see you next time on Beyond 6040.